he had successfully managed to flick a teaspoon from his toes so that it would balance on the bridge of his nose. She had glided through the air in a way that some birds would be proud of. He had sung pitch-perfect songs from musicals, operas and even Queen. And the crowds were delighted. Applause rose from every seat in the theatre. People rose to their feet and cheers filled the air. This was the scene every night at showtime on my cruise earlier this month. The delight and enthusiasm was infectious. There is no doubt the audience loved what they had seen and heard and experienced. And they wanted to express their appreciation to the artists who had offered their gifts for others to enjoy. The jugglers, acrobats and singers were simply incredible. I was amazed by what I saw, absolutely. But since then, I've actually spent more time reflecting on the audience's reaction. I was surrounded by people who seemingly took delight in the present moment. They took delight in wonderful things and they took delight in life. And then I reflected on who else takes delight in the present moment, takes delight in wonderful things and takes delight in life. And concluded that it is often the young who see the wonder of the world. They are not looking at the world with negativity and doubt, but with energy and excitement. But then, in many cases, we grow up. Sometimes, even before we reach double figures, cynicism and scepticism sets in. But sometimes we manage to hold on to delight for a little longer. And some people manage to hold on to their zest for life until their dying day. God created us to enjoy life. He gave us life as a gift, not to punish us. When you consider what has delighted you this week, do many things easily fill your mind or are you left scratching your head? A stranger giving you a genuine smile, putting on clothes that have been warmed on the radiator, laughing out loud at a funny memory, watching the rain fall when you have nowhere to be and can curl up on the sofa. All simple things that can bring us delight. All things that we can choose to be enthusiastic about. I know life can be tough. I know there are things in your life and this world that cause pain and fear. There are circumstances which can threaten to take away the joy of life. But a change in perspective, even for a moment, shows us that joy doesn't come through being negative. There's a great verse in Ecclesiastes 8.15 which says, And so, I heartily recommend it that you pursue joy, for the best a person can do under the sun is to enjoy life, eat, drink and be happy. If this is your attitude, joy will carry you through the toil every day that God gives you under the sun. Is this wisdom you expect to find in the Bible? Or are you a little surprised by the Old Testament's encouragement to delight in life? This verse doesn't avoid the truth that life isn't always full of happiness and delight. It speaks of making the most of the gifts we have been given whilst living in the reality of toiling in a broken world. The thing with life and faith is, we do not face purely challenges or simply happiness. They run parallel to each other. But where we focus can transform our lives. There is sometimes a perception from outside the church that Christianity takes all the fun out of life. Sometimes the church has fueled that idea. But Jesus came not to take all the joy and excitement from life, but to bring delight and enthusiasm to it. Jesus declares in John 10.10, 10, I came so they can have real and eternal life, 
more and better life than they ever dreamed of. Because of Jesus, we can delight in the simple joys of life. Sunrises, flowers blossoming, a steaming cup of coffee, a cosy hot water bottle, laughter with friends. But delight isn't only found in the positive experiences of life which make us feel good. Delight can be found too when mist surrounds, leaves are falling, we've run out of coffee, our hot water bottle has burst and our friends are not around. In Acts 5, 17 to 42, we read part of the story of the early church. We see the apostles being arrested and put in jail. We are amazed as the angel of the Lord sets them free and tells them to go stand in the temple courts and tell the people all about this new life, which naturally, obediently they do. The apostles are forced to stand in front of the Sanhedrin. Peter speaks the truth that is in his heart, but death nearly visits the apostles. Gamaliel's speech saves their lives, but still the apostles are flogged and ordered to remain silent. It's the next part, though, that I want to pick up on. The apostles left the Sanhedrin, rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. The early church found delight, not in sunny days and good coffee. The early church found delight in persecution because they knew the good news of Jesus was worth delighting in, despite the darkness. And they did not just rejoice despite their suffering. They rejoiced because they were suffering, suffering with a purpose. To delight is to experience a high degree of satisfaction or pleasure. It is to find joy. It is wonderful when we are able to cherish the moment and find delight in the simple pleasures of life. To slow down and to appreciate life's blessings comes naturally to some people and takes a little more discipline for others. But ultimately, we are not simply to find delight in creation, but in our creator. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. In Psalm 37, David is old. So we hear wise words from a man after God's own heart, who has spent much of his life dwelling in the presence of God. In this psalm, we see David using the verb fret three times in the first eight verses. But he interweaves this with God's antidote for fretting. He tells us several things we can do to counter fretting. Understand evil do as final end. Trust in the Lord. Do good. Cultivate faithfulness. Commit our ways to the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently and take delight in the Lord. In this verse, the Hebrew word for delight, anag, is a command to find our enjoyment in God. Another Hebrew word for delight, shepherds, means to incline toward, a very fitting description of what our attitude towards God should be. It might remind you of Philippians 4 verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord's always. Delighting or rejoicing is never an act of duty, but an act of love. Think of someone whose company you enjoy. What is it you enjoy about their company? Perhaps it is their kindness, their warm spirit, their compassion, their sense of humour. We long to be in the presence of people who make us feel good about life and about ourselves. We have a God who is kinder, warmer, more compassionate, and yes, even funnier than the person whose company we enjoy the most. 
God enjoys time with us and we can enjoy time with him. As we get to know the true nature of God more deeply, we will take greater delight in him. St Thomas Aquinas said, No man can live without delight. And that is why a man deprived of spiritual joy goes over to evil pleasures. There are many things of this world giving pure delight which honours God. But there are things which give us false delight, temporary pleasure, which cause us harm. But love does not delight in evil. We are to look at the world through the eyes of Christ, to seek delight in the good gifts that come from God. For then we will experience the fullness of joy Jesus came to bring. The early church found delight in Christ and so found delight in sharing the good news despite the horror of persecution. William Booth said this, I am glad you are enjoying yourself. The Salvationist is the friend of happiness. Making heaven on earth is our business. To serve the Lord with gladness is one of our favourite mottos. Loving God and loving others is not something to do begrudgingly, but something to embrace, something to delight in. Booth goes on to speak of taking our joy and gladness into places where misery abounds. The apostles were so excited, so enthusiastic, so delighted by the message of Jesus' life, death and resurrection that communicating that story brought them truly alive. How about you? Are you so delighted by God that you cannot help but rejoice in sharing his truth with others? Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote this. Enthusiasm is one of the most powerful engines of success. When you do a thing, do it with your might. Put your whole soul into it. Samp it with your own personality. Be active, be energetic, be enthusiastic and faithful, and you will accomplish your object. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. There's a great but painful story told of Eugene Ormandy, who dislocated his shoulder whilst conducting the Philadelphia Orchestra because he was doing it too enthusiastically. It was speculated that maybe Ormandy was conducting Brahms <coughs> because in the margin of one of his symphonies, Brahms wrote, as loud as possible, only a few bars later to write, louder still. I wonder, have I done anything so enthusiastically I've dislocated anything? Have you? Without looking too hard, we can find reasons in this world to be fearful, cynical and negative. But it takes no more energy to find reasons in the world to be in awe, hopeful and positive. This week, pay special attention to all the reasons there are to delight. But if we find ourselves like the apostles, persecuted, abused and threatened because of our faith, that is an even greater reason to delight. God himself is the source of all joy and hope. Take delight in him for he will always be there and he will never change. Poet and theologian Thomas Traherne wrote, Till you can sing and rejoice and delight in God, as misers do in gold and kings in scepters, you can never enjoy the world. There is always a reason in this world to delight, for there will always be a wonderful God who loves us deeply. Life is a beautiful gift. We have a beautiful story to tell of God's love, compassion and salvation plan for all the world. Let's pray that our zest for life and enthusiasm for that story honours the one who created us and longs for us to enjoy him as he enjoys us. And if you find yourself at the theatre, 
surrounded by applause and cheers. May that enthusiasm be directed from your heart towards Jesus Christ, who is more delightful, wonderful and worthy of praise than any juggler, acrobats or singer. God bless you.